Mary Stephen started having serious conversations about setting up a memories group. Uh, there have been whispers around the ropes uh, about the memories groups that had been started by a chap called Mike White and Boyd, and these have developed all around the country. Uh, it was a serious conversation that Mary started then have with Bert, uh, who then really took up the challenge and got this going. And as I say, that was five years ago, and whilst people like Jerry Keating, myself, Derek Patton, have helped bring certain people along to speak to the groups, by a distance, it's Bert, who's done all the heavy lifting with getting people here, going through the fret of making sure that someone who's not getting anything more than a bottle of wine uh, actually turns up on the day when we announced it would be, and he's never failed us. He has never failed us. So after five years, he's decided to put his cue back in the rack and say, right chaps, someone else do it for us. But we are greatly obliged to you, Bert. Um, I think it speaks volumes that uh, we have days when we have 20, 30, 40, and sometimes 60 people here. And, you know, it's Bert, it's Bert, it's Bert. And well done, Bert. We're greatly obliged to you. We would be obliged if you would kindly come out. We may would come up too and take a small token of our appreciation, Bert, if you would come up. successful man is an astonished mother-in-law. <laughs> Let us be a great, Bert's wife Liz has been a great help to us and would you please, with her our appreciation, give it to her. Liz is on grandma duty today, I think, is that right? Yes, yeah, sure. She's coming, she's coming later on. Oh, I'll talk back then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so you you take this to Liz but and give her a kiss too. <laughs> and give her a kiss too. <laughs> You were written, but you know, I just want to take this <laughs> Anyway, yes, it came by, as you know, Duncan has Alzheimer's, and through that, through the club, um, I knew that there was golfing memories, there was football memories, but I hadn't heard of rugby memories. So in a conversation with Mike, he put me in touch with Mike White, and the rest is history. It's grown arms and legs, and a big thank you to Bert. The Rugby Club as well for letting us have this uh, venue for the meetings. But thank you to Bert for keeping us up to date with all the information and all the dates and the calendars and the speakers and, and the great speakers. Certainly learned a lot how to work the computer. Right? That's good. Well, I learned something. That's good. <laughs> and just to say, well, you, a lot of you asked about Duncan and he is fine, although two weeks ago he had a seizure. So that worried us a bit, but he's picking up fine and uh, they're keeping a good uh, eye on him, they're observing him, so they're, they're, they're looking after him well. So, anyway, all the best in your retirement. <laughs> <laughs> but I do hope you're going to be able to come to the memories group. <laughs> I will come if I remember. <laughs> Out is the fact that um, without you guys coming along, we wouldn't have a memories group. We started, we started, I think, the first one way back in 2017. I think there was about 12 people turned up. Uh, Jerry and I were tasked by Ken to get 10 people each. Halfway through trying to get it, Jerry phoned me and says, Look, now, I'm still working. Could you just carry on and do it? <laughs> so, the rest history. But, the most we've had is 67, which I think is marvellous. And again, you guys, month after month, come along, and I can only thank you. And it's without, without you guys, it's no use me or anybody else getting speakers. And it's interesting when you do go and I speak to them or you get a contact, I've only had two refusals, and both of them have been uh, the professional rugby guys. Uh, Monday seems to be a bad day to get anybody from uh, either Edinburgh or Glasgow. But, uh, and I've always said, and I can't go on saying it, 
if I got a contact, it was pretty easy for me to contact them and nobody, as I said, apart from the professional guys, nobody ever said no. We may have to juggle on dates, but that was it. But anyway, thanks again guys and I appreciate this and I'll quite sure this will appreciate as well because she's quite into her flowers. So thanks again. Thank you. Can you seriously, can you hear me at the back? I know you can, yeah, yeah fine, thank you. Um, <coughs> Tom Kerr, who we all know, is going to speak to us. And in all seriousness, um, Tom and I play a lot of golf together, we take the video out of each other. But I'm really obliged to you, Tom, to pull this out for slight home. Fraser Brown is going to speak uh, today, but exactly as Bert said, suddenly at the last home, he got this commitment to Glasgow Warriors that he had to be in training for this particular part of the week and he will come back to us at some point. Tom, very, very kindly, having just been away for three weeks uh, for the, came off the bench and he's going to speak to us. Um, let me just read a wee bit to, uh, about this. I'm going to state off the CV that Tom sent to me. And I have to say, you know, Tom and I, I first met Tom when he started playing cricket at Bog Hall. Tom actually captained the county at uh, Bog Hall and he was also, he became wicket keeper. <laughs> He very quickly got the nickname of the Ancient Mariner because he stopped with one of three. Anyway, here we go. Um, let me read this. Tom is at Lillithan Primary School in the Academy from uh, 51 to 62. He then became a Cadet Chief Engineer with VP from 62 to 76. Did many great things, including taking a 300,000 ton tanker. Good God. To Nagasaki, As, and he was chief engineer, quite an accomplishment. Then from 76 to 83, he was lecturer at Glasgow Nottingham College. Uh, then in 83 to 86, he had a training contract in Jeddah and Saudi Arabia with the Institute Group. And then, for quite a while, from 86 to 2002, he was self-employed with his own marine consultancy and survey work. But it was back in 92 that he was elected councillor, this is where we know Tom Best, for the St Michael's Order of the Little on West Lothian District Council. From 96 to 2007, he was elected councillor for the reform of the Little War, uh, War to West Lothian Council. And then from 2007, he was provost of West Lothian. And now, from the birth of me, since the election, he's now retired. But when you think about it, 30 years as a councillor, it's a big deal. 15 years as prophet. Big deal. Well done, Tom. And, you know, it, that's a serious well done because I don't think anyone's been a council for 30 years. I don't think anyone's been a prophet for 15 years. Anyway, Tom is going to talk to us. We'll then have a break. We'll have a cup of coffee, tea, or what have you, and then we'll do a QA afterwards. At the end of this morning's get together, for those of you who want, for the 50th anniversary dinner, um, Colin Watson's daughter, Lindsay, uh, put together a fantastic historical video. It lasts for about eight minutes, Colin. <coughs> uh, on, uh, about the pub history, and we're going to show it at the end. So it's on the big screen at the back if anyone wants to stay and have a video. So, but uh, folks, uh, if you'd be so kind, could you show your appreciation? Tom Kerr. Yeah, I need to use this thing. Yeah. Can you hear me clearly? Yes. Yes, I'm going to do, do without this. Are you, are you? People in the past have said that they had difficulty. Oh, okay, then I'll, 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 I'll use it then. Um, Michael did a quick resume of my uh, CV there, uh, but I'd just like to start by one memory that I do have, and that memory is here when I used to attend when let go primary school, which was the school at the Westport there. There was the wee school and the big school. The, the wee school is demolished now, but the big school is still there. I mean, when you got to primary six or seven, we had a football team. And uh, we used to play here at the upper mains. And my memory of that is, they still had full-size goalposts. <laughs> and we were, what, 10, 11. <laughs> And I found I scored a hell of a lot of goals. 
Because this wee chap and these massive goals was so easy to beat. Uh, so that was my memory here. And I'll come back to the upper and lower mains in a, in a, in a while, uh, a bit later on. But um, I'd like to talk to you mainly about um, my time in local government. I could ram it on for a long time about my marine experience because you know, I went to sea when it was uh, <coughs> wooden ships and iron men, iron ships and wooden men. But, uh, but um, in 1992, I got elected to the district council and um, Jimmy McGinley was made the convener at that time. And the council, again, as most councils are now, was a hung council. And there was something like two of us, two conservatives and an independent, actually had the sort of balance of power even at that time. But Jimmy, who was the convener, he really was a bit of a showman as well. But in 1992, it was the 20th anniversary of the Hoch Sullivan twinning. West Lothian is twinned with Hoch Sullivan in Germany. And Jimmy decided to take out of the 24 councillors, 16 of us, to Germany that year. And through my political experiences, I've suffered pleasure, I've suffered embarrassment, I've suffered a whole range of things. But I want to tell you about one of the most embarrassing moments it did happen on that visit to Germany. Now, Hochschirland is where the dams are that the dam busters had to go at. The Moen, the Hennessy, the Ida. And the Moensee Dam is the one that they actually burst. Uh, and you can walk across the top of that dam um, and we were there with some of our German friends and I'm walking, speaking fluently in German, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> across when in front of me was a fellow councillor who I will not name, but he was maybe about five or six metres ahead of us and he was speaking and then all of a sudden I heard this. Okay, I'm coming in love. <laughs> <laughs> Could have jumped over the dam. <laughs> uh, but on that visit, we also the Bob Holland Bathgate Pipe Band had been very successful in the World Championships, and we had the Bob Holland Bathgate Pipe Band with us on that visit. And if any of you have been to Armsburg in, in, in Germany, uh, quite a number of the Lithgow Academy pupils have been to Armsburg. I know my daughter is <coughs> over there because it was almost a a link between Armsburg and the Lincoln Academy, and it was a it was, visits took place regularly. It was a Sunday morning, and Jimmy had been invited to open this art exhibition. And Armsburg, traditional German town, the sort of main drive walks uphill, there's a clock tower at the top, and the place that he had to open was on the right hand side at the top of the road. And the pipe band, being a pipe band, were supposed to march in front of us, but before they can march and play, they have to tune up their pipes. Now, at half past nine on a Sunday morning, <laughs> these pipers were in doorways up and down the street, and I've never seen so many shutters of windows <laughs> to the screaming of these pipes. Uh, but anyway, that was the sort of start of my experience and on local government, which I thought was going to be great fun. <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, we had to come home. But during that four years, from 92 to 96, uh, I have to say, we had some success as a council. We built the leisure centre up there, and some of you may recall, when the rugby club wanted to get the lower mains, uh, that was one, one of the few occasions where Jimmy and me parted company. Jimmy almost turned it into a football against rugby contest. Because uh, I was convinced, having going to build this leisure centre with four or five football pitches up there, we didn't need another football pitch at the lower mains. By the way, can anyone remember when it was the dog track down there? Yes. Hector, yeah. I've got people just about my age here as well. <laughs> the, 
the where was that? I was on about the the football the, the football you know. The football at the, the lower mains, yes. And Jimmy wanted to protect it as a football pitch. And it went to a vote on the council and I managed to win the vote on that occasion. So that is really how the rugby club goes <coughs> to the mains. And I think what they've done down there is absolutely tremendous and it's been a great success, I would say, as has the club itself um, and the way it's expanded and developed. And having just gone next door, been invited by Hector to have a look at the, the building set up for the March's dance, that's going to be a tremendous venue for the future as well. So, 92 to 96, the District Council, along came 96, when we had to really fight quite strongly to get West Lothian as a unitary council. Um, there was quite a number of people who uh, wanted to divide us up into other areas, but we were successful. So in 96, uh, the districts and the regions disappeared, which had been set up under the Wheatley Committee. <laughs> <laughs>
chain on, it was very easy. Because all you had to say was, everyone here going to work for, for Liam, yeah. Everyone in West Lothian, yeah. Everyone in Scotland, yeah. And at that, a pair of knickers could fly down to the street. <laughs> <laughs> not finished with that. <laughs> so I carried on for a little bit longer, and lo and behold, I read Bracken winging onto the stage and landed on my shoulder. I said, that was for me, son, not you. <laughs> and when they showed the film on the Saturday night, they missed that out. <laughs> I was really disappointed. But the following week, we found that the <coughs> turnover at Marks and Spencer's had dropped considerably in the previous week. So, give us how many pairs of knickers and how many bras, <laughs> because the thing was set up immediately outside it. Uh, another uh, enjoyable event was Susan Boyle. Now, Susan, uh, I'm going to try to be as polite as I possibly can. Uh, we got calls from Harper's Magazine, uh, CNN in America, uh, Radio China, all coming into our uh, communications department on the council regarding Susan reaching the final. And we also got a telephone call from Thames Television saying that they were going to be bring, bringing Susan up and uh, we'd like the provost to come along and meet in the Happy Valley pub in Blackburn. It's no longer called the Happy Valley pub. Um, I struggled to find it. The, the, anyway, um, we went along to the we came up, went to the pub, nobody there. And then we got another phone call to say, oh, we're just going along to her house. So we drove along to the house, and as we got along the street where she lived, <coughs> all sorts of people there, sticking cars, well done Susan cars through the doors. And this bit's, you cut the, 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 a lot of these people were the people who had actually been taken a rise out of her for several years. That was the sad thing about it. And they were letting absolutely nobody into the house. Uh, I said to Anne, the driver, I says, Anne, why don't you go up and just ask if she'll, she'll see the provost? So, lo and behold, I'm in. Susan comes, comes out. Oh, I can't tell you where I'm going. I'm not allowed to tell you what I'm going to do next. They had really briefed her on what she could say and what she couldn't say. But they had a heavy on the door, Frankie. And I had heard that Demi Moore, the actress, had become a big fan of Susan's. So when I was speaking to Susan, I said, Susan, if you get to meet Demi Moore, I would love to meet her as well. Behind me from Frankie came after my might. <laughs> the, but Susan was a phenomenon. She was in the marquee down here, judging uh, for us at um, a talent show that we had. Um, and she seems to be doing quite well. Uh, so these were a couple of the experiences <coughs> which I've had. I'm using experiences. Uh, other things that I really enjoyed doing was in fact, with the Lord Lieutenant, we used to visit people who were celebrating their 60th, 65th or 70th wedding anniversaries. Also, people who had reached 100 or 105. And in the 15 years, I think, or I know, that we had seven, uh, seven 70th wedding anniversaries. Uh, I can tell you, it was a real pleasure to speak to people uh, that, that we were meeting there. Uh, the, the varied memories were incredible, going back decades and decades. I can tell you, far better doing that than trying to chair the council meeting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I must admit, most of the councillors during, and for 15 years, as I said, I've chaired the council meeting, most councillors are well behaved. 
but there are one or two who have not well behaved. And uh, in the early days, I had a gavel in, in the chambers. And on one occasion, this particular councillor was getting really totally out of order. He would not shut up. I'm not going to tell you where he was going to throw his name. So I picked up the gavel and I banged it and the head came off. <laughs> <laughs> the good thing is it went in the wrong direction. Uh, the, but now it was much easier latterly because we went on to a speaker system and I had the ability to mute. <laughs> <laughs> and it was even better when you were uh, doing the virtual meetings because you had real control, <laughs> real power. You could knock the audio off, you could knock the video off. <laughs> uh, so really, I could go on a lot about the experiences that I had as, as promised. Um, uh, but what I would like to do, um, and I'm sure there might be some, please do not ask me political questions, okay? You can ask me any questions you like, but I would avoid, but uh, I will not answer party political questions, unless they're in my favour. Now, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think what we'll do, if you don't want your yes, 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 what we'll do, folks, now is have a tier of coffee, yeah. they come back. And Tom might do those Q&A's, if you'd be so kind. But does that not give them too long to think up questions? <laughs> <laughs> Tom, we're greatly obliged to you.